Spain is in crisis again. Now, I know you are probably thinking about the Catalan independence movement at this point, which has long been a defining feature of Spanish politics, but don't be fooled. This is merely one facet of a broader and more complex set of challenges confronting Spain, challenges that are deeply rooted in the country's turbulent history. That is why, as the nation stands at a crossroads, grappling with regional independence movements, political stalemates, an immigration crisis, and social as well as economic disparities, we need to look to the past for answers. Welcome to Living History. The Spanish Civil War, which tore Spain apart from 1936 to 1939, was fueled by deep-seated political, social, and economic tensions that continue to resonate till this day. Today, on the social front, the income inequality in Spain, as measured by the Gini coefficient, stands at a troubling 32% in 2022, exceeding the EU average. The housing crisis has also worsened, with the average price of a home in Spain 24% higher than the EU average. There is also, of course, the economic landscape, made worse by the COVID-19 pandemic, which triggered a surge in unemployment rates, reaching an alarming 15.5% in 2020, the highest in the European Union. Spain's public debt has also steadily climbed in recent years, reaching a concerning 122% of GDP in 2021, among the highest levels among the G7 nations, before falling slightly in 2023. However, further compounding these economic and social challenges is the persistent political instability that has plagued Spain in recent years. The fragmented parliament has made it extremely difficult to form stable governments, resulting in five general elections in the last four years. This political instability has hindered efforts to address the nation's pressing issues, including, of course, the immigration crisis. You see, Spain is on the front lines of the European immigration crisis. According to data from Eurostat, in 2020, there were over 5.3 million foreign citizens residing in Spain, representing 11.1% of the total population. The majority of immigrants come from Morocco, some 1.2 million, followed by Romania, China, Colombia, and Venezuela. Though it is also worth noting that there are over 307,000 Brits who now call Spain their home as well. In fact, we uncovered quite a lot about this when we dived into the topic of immigration on Ground News, our favorite unbiased guide to the news, which empowers us to freely navigate the complexities of today's world with well-informed, independent thinking. If you're interested in checking it out, we left a link for you in the description. Now, although immigration has contributed to Spain's economy and labor force, with immigrants accounting for a significant share of employment in sectors such as construction, agriculture, and hospitality, concerns about integration, social cohesion, and undocumented immigration from Africa and Asia persist. In light of these interconnected challenges, Spain stands at a crossroads. Its ability to navigate these turbulent waters will depend on its capacity to find common ground and forge consensus among its diverse political factions. But this task is not without its historical baggage. You see, Spain has faced similar divisions in the past, with the harrowing consequences of civil war and a brutal dictatorship in its aftermath. So let's turn back the clock a moment and look at what history can tell us. Spain's political landscape in the years leading up to the Civil War was deeply polarized between two main factions, the conservative Catholic and monarchist nationalists, led by General Francisco Franco, and the leftist Secular and Republican Popular Front. These two opposing forces represented the entrenched political and ideological divides that had shaped Spanish society for centuries. Similarly, the current Spanish political landscape exhibits echoes of this stark divide. The conservative Partido Popular PP, and the center-right Ciudadanos C's often align with the interests of the conservative establishment and the Catholic Church, while the more liberal Partido Socialista Obrero Español PSOE, and the emerging leftist Unidas Podemos advocate for progressive reforms and social justice. The Catalan independence movement, which has gained momentum in recent years as a result of the very contentious 2017 independence referendum is a manifestation of these deep-seated political, social, and economic tensions. 
While predominantly peaceful with a focus on democratic activism, it has also witnessed a darker side, marked by violence and extremism. Throughout history, several Catalan nationalist groups have emerged, advocating for independence through violent means. One such group, Estat Català Estat Català de Esquerra, Catalan state left-wing Catalan state, engaged in a campaign of bombings and assassinations during the Spanish Civil War, 1936-1939. More recently, another group, Terra Jura, Free Land, carried out a series of bomb attacks and arson attacks in the early 2000s, further escalating tensions between Catalan nationalists and the Spanish government. In 2012, Comité de Defensa de la República, Committee for the Defense of the Republic, emerged with the aim of achieving Catalan independence through any means necessary, and although it has not claimed responsibility for any specific attacks, its rhetoric has inspired individuals involved in violent incidents. The current situation in Spain is again increasingly volatile. Just consider this. Carles Puigdemont, who was forced into exile after his daring but failed Catalonia secession bid, is now turning heads by backing Madrid's socialist government. A shocking move that has, in essence, brought him and his allies a very controversial amnesty and ignited fierce protests across Spain. And given how contentious this issue is, it would not take much for this to escalate into a more violent act. And it is precisely such a violent incident that lit the fuse that started the Spanish Civil War back in 1936. The assassination of left-wing politician José Calvo Sotelo by nationalist forces on July 13, 1936, triggered a military uprising in Morocco, led by General Franco. This uprising quickly spread to mainland Spain, plunging the country into civil war which raged for three years, resulting in hundreds of thousands of deaths, mass displacement, and widespread destruction. Critically, the Spanish Civil War left a deep scar on Spanish society, creating a legacy of division and mistrust that continues to shape the political landscape today. The nationalist victory under Franco's dictatorship further entrenched these divisions, as Franco imposed a repressive regime that suppressed dissent, promoted monoculturalism, and sought to erase the memory of the Republican cause. Which brings us back to the critical issue of immigration in Spain, which during the Franco era was marked by strict control and an emphasis on a homogenous national identity. Post-Franco, Spain's transition to democracy and its subsequent economic growth led to an increase in immigration, which was initially welcomed to bolster the workforce. However, as economic conditions shifted, particularly after the 2008 financial crisis and the more recent COVID-19 pandemic, immigration began to be viewed through a lens of competition for resources and jobs, stirring social and political tensions. This tension is further complicated by Spain's turbulent political landscape, with divisions that again can be traced back to the Spanish Civil War. The war's legacy has perpetuated a dichotomy in Spanish politics, with right-wing parties often adopting a more stringent stance on immigration, viewing it as a threat to Spanish identity and security, while left-wing parties typically advocate for more open and inclusive policies. This polarization has been evident in the varying approaches to immigration across different regions of Spain, especially in areas with strong separatist movements like Catalonia. Compounding things further, the lack of a stable, cohesive government has led to inconsistent and sometimes contradictory immigration policies, and aided the resurgence of far-right politics in Spain, echoing a trend seen across Europe. Parties like Vox have capitalized on public anxieties, linking immigration to broader concerns about national identity and security. This has in turn pushed mainstream parties to adopt tougher stances on immigration and polarized society further, making balanced debate harder. A worrying trend in light of Spain's turbulent history. If you want to know more about the challenges other countries in Europe are facing, check out our next video, linked here. See you there!